Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Air Force is Global Classroom. My name is Michaela McCurry, and I work with the outreach team here at the Air Force Culture and Language Center. Did you know that May is Mental Health Awareness Month? According to Mental Health America, in 2019 and 2020, nearly 21% of adults were experiencing a mental illness. That's equivalent to more than 50 million Americans. Almost 55% of adults with a mental illness do not receive treatment, totaling more than 28 million individuals. Joining us today for our May AFCLC TV Facebook Live event are Dr. Susan Steen and Lieutenant Colonel Wendy Allison to discuss their work with the Air University Research Task Force on Resilience to promote well being for service members. Dr. Steen is an Associate Professor of Cross Cultural Communication at the AFCLC and also serves as the Director of the Air University Resilience Research Task Force. She earned her PhD in communication from the University of Southern Mississippi in 2007 and held a variety of positions in the field of international education prior to joining ASCLC in 2015. Dr. Steen's scholarship involves intercultural, interpersonal, and organizational communication, and she uses a communication perspective to examine ways in individuals and groups can connect across cultural divides, build resilient communities, and enact inclusion and cultural agility. Lieutenant Colonel Wendy Allison is a career security forces officer that has served in active duty, reserve, and guard components of the Air Force. She's a three-time squadron commander and, and a recent graduate of the Air War College. She is also a student in the Air University Resilience Research Task Force, and her research paper, Wolfpack Resiliency, Promoting Resiliency Through Belonging in Air Force Squadron Commanders, was selected for the Professional Development Award for the academic year 2023 in Air War College. Colonel Allison's passion is taking care of airmen and connecting good people to good people to help others reach their full potential. She has an amazing son and also two shelter cats who might make an unexpected cameo today. <laughs> Ladies, thank you so much for joining us in the Air Force's Global Classroom. Thank you for having us. All right, so let's get started. Uh, Dr. Steen, can you tell us what the purpose of the Air University Research Task Force on Resilience is? Thank you so much, Ms. McCurry, yes. So every year, Air University gives Air War College and Air Command and Staff College students and faculty a chance to take part in a year-long project exploring topics of special interest to the Air Force and wider DOD. Our Resilience Research Task Force works to identify strategies for strengthening resilience in the DOD with a particular focus on fostering cultures that promote trust and teamwork and connectedness and belonging. Awesome. And this isn't a, a new research task force, correct? That's right. Uh, no, it's not. The Resilience RTF has been in operation for some time. My own involvement began uh, three years ago, so I'm just wrapping up my third year with the project. And we've had 19 students take part over the past three years. One of the coolest things about our project is the impact that's occurring as our students graduate and take what they've learned back out into the world. That's absolutely amazing that so many students have participated in a research task force promoting resilience like this. Uh, so what are some other topics that the research task force has explored? Well, uh, let's see. We spend significant time on understanding culture and how leaders shape organizational culture. We look at the importance of social connectedness and belonging to resilience. We learn about suicide pre and post pension, and we study theories that can help our understanding and recovery from trauma or disruption or disaster. And we explore ways that learning from failure can help strengthen our resilience. Um, that's just a sample, but that's a, a, a really, um, I, I think a good sample of the kinds of things that we're looking at. And our goal is to give our students a wide array of perspectives and tools that they can use as they begin developing their own research projects and that they can use when they graduate and go back to their day jobs. Lieutenant Colonel Allison's project has wonderful applications for us all. 
Um, and it's worth saying once again that her research paper won the Air War College Award for Professional Development. So I am looking forward to hearing more from her. Awesome. So Lieutenant Colonel Allison, you were actually able, you were on the research task force participants who recently briefed the Air Mobility Command Commander, uh, General Mike Minahan, who was visiting ASLC. Can you talk a little bit about that experience? Yes, um, thank you for having me on here. I really appreciate it. Uh, one of the hardest things about writing academic papers is wondering if anybody is ever going to actually read it. <laughs> and having the opportunity to brief General Minahan was so incredibly rewarding. And anybody that's ever interacted with him knows that he is very charismatic and he just has such deep passion for resilience and for, for improving airmen's lives. Um, it was wonderful to have that opportunity to brief our research papers to him, and it was definitely a highlight of my RTF experience and, and a highlight of my War College experience. I feel very confident that our work from all of uh, my other three colleagues and I that, that got to brief him, that that will find its way into General Minahan's resiliency efforts um, in Air Mobility Command and beyond. And that was ultimately our goal. We wanted to somehow affect positive change with resiliency efforts around the Air Force and, and Department of Defense. That's amazing. And I know that was a great experience to be able to brief him and provide some insight into how we can make resilience better in the Air Force and the wider DOD. Uh, so your presentation is entitled Wolfpack Resiliency, Promoting Resiliency Through Belonging in Squadron Commanders. Can you tell us a little bit about your project? Sure. So my background is in biology, and I'm absolutely fascinated by animal behavior. And early on in the process, I was talking to a colleague about what research topics uh, I wanted to really dig into this year. And we kept coming back to the idea of tribes and packs. And from there, we uh, kind of came up with this idea of, of a wolf pack. And I decided to look at wolf packs specifically to see if, if there was a way that you could use them as a model to build resiliency in a military organization or, or in people. And when you look at wolf packs, without any special training, wolves create psychological safety and belonging, but they still maintain high standards for group membership. Wolves instinctively know that they need each other for survival. And, and you can see that these are the characteristics of a high performing military unit. In my research, I found that perceptions of belonging had significant impacts on individual resiliency and that daily belonging is the most critical to building strong teams with strong resiliency. And now I, I wrote my, my paper specifically about squadron commanders, but the reality is this applies to everybody. Uh, in the military, our PACs are our sphere of influence. A squadron commander's pack is their senior staff, their officers, their senior NCOs. A group commander's pack are their staff, their squadron commanders. An NCO's pack are their troops and, and their peers. There's obviously not clear-cut lines that would define these packs, but it does provide a framework for all airmen to recognize that everyone has ownership in the success of their pack. For my, for my model specifically, I looked at Dan Coyle's lessons from Culture Code, which included build safety, share vulnerability, and establish purpose. And then I added a fourth element, which is augment, but don't outsource your belonging. And what I mean by this lesson is that we need to recognize that building resiliency and belonging doesn't happen at annual training events. It happens in the daily interactions that we have with each other. And my colleague, Colonel John Isako, also wrote about that topic specifically. It's a great paper that everyone should check out when they get an opportunity. The, the key element for Wolfpack resiliency is ownership. Uh, there's research from Lisa Finn and Lisa Johnson called the Gamma Factor, and it looks at influence not as a pyramid like we would see with a military structure or military chain of command, but more of a web where our close direct relationships have indirect, uh, indirect, indirect causes on the rest of the system. And this is very much how a pack operates and really is the core of wolf pack resiliency. Uh, everyone contributes to the success of the pack. So what does that mean for us today? So look around your organization, the people that you work with are your pack. 
And you can ask yourself, is, is there ways that maybe you can build better belonging within your group? Because again, we all contribute to that success of our organization, not just our leaders. Thank you. Wow, that is amazing. And you can definitely apply that both in the military settings and in general uh, with that resilience effort. So thank you for telling us about that project. Uh, so Dr. Steen, not only did you all brief AMC Commander General Minahan, but you also were able to travel to the Pentagon to brief Brigadier General Deborah Lovett, the Director of Air Force Integrated Resilience. Can you tell us about that experience? Sure, yes. Thanks to the support of our AFCLC director, we were able to travel to DC and engage with our sponsor, uh, General Levitt and her team in the HAF A1Z office. We provided an out brief of our year's efforts and the students shared their uh, project findings and recommendations, which we know will feed back into some of the projects the A1Z team is working on. So that was a great experience and opportunity for all of us. It's amazing. So where do you see the research task force going from here? Uh, onwards, we will be excited to welcome a new group of uh, students in the fall and to tackle new challenges that our members and our member organizations are seeing and experiencing. Um, the work of building resilience in our military and DOD grows more important every day and will be there to grow along with the needs. Awesome. All right, so for our last question, before we take questions from our audience, um, Lieutenant Colonel Allison, is there anything you would like to add about your experience with the Air University RTF? Uh, just that I'm very grateful that I had the opportunity um, just to be able to dig in on this topic for an entire year was, was fantastic. And I'm very appreciative of Dr. Steen and everybody that helped make this happen. Thank you for that. And Dr. Steen, is there any additional you'd like to add about the Resilience Research Task Force? Um, yes, there is. Thank you. Two things. One is that resilience is not something people either have or they don't. It occurs through and after adversity, but it can be developed and strengthened, um, and not just in isolation, but in connection and community with each other. Um, the second is that resilience in organizations is not just the result of having resilient individuals within them. It's um, there's something more at play in the interaction of people and mission and structure and relationship and practice. Um, so, so my conclusion there is that the whole really is greater than the sum of its parts. And if we pay attention to this, we can learn a lot about leading for resilience in our organizations and teams. Awesome. Thank you for that feedback. So now we'll take any questions from our audience. So if anybody has any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat. And if you're on Facebook, you can drop them in the comments as well. And uh, we'll be sure to read those questions out to our team here. Uh, so we have a question here, Lieutenant Colonel Allison, it sounds like you're getting a lot of traction. What are your hopes for your paper? Perhaps are you going to add it to a reading list or a possible publication? Uh, great question. Thank you. Um, so I, I do hope to get published and I'm working on paring it down into something that would work for one of the, the different Air University publishing sources. And so we'll see. Um, I would I would just love to see people internalize the idea of of their pack and just move out on it. You know, look at look at who you work with and and take that ownership. Thanks. Thank you for that. All right. Um, can either of you or both of you give us some tips that organizations could implement uh, maybe immediately or uh, quickly over time to promote resiliency within their organization? Um, Lieutenant Colonel Allison and I both might be thinking about um, a very specific application of one of our other students' paper, um, and and that was you know in he talked about ways to build social connection and belonging specifically through building buy-in, um, through making your conversations matter, and he offered some particular tips for doing that. Lieutenant Colonel Allison, would you like to pick up that thread? Um, sure. So as far as 
building that um, those daily connections are really what matters the most. And so, um, you know, we've always had the the jokes of everybody says, how are you doing? You respond fine. And then everybody moves on with life. And, and if you just pause and make those interactions a lot more meaningful. And earlier today, I was talking to Dr. Steen. I found this, this great Etsy game and it's, it's Jenga, but on each of the blocks, it has a very bizarre question that's meant to be a conversation starter. And one of them is of course, like, what are your first actions in the zombie apocalypse? And every security forces person out there is like, step one, ammo, step two, food, step three, you know, get the compound bill. And, you know, and then other people would be like, that's the strangest thing I've ever heard. I've never thought of that. And so it's just kind of a, a fun and different way to, um, to just, I guess, really uh, make more meaning with your, with your interactions with your folks. Awesome. That's a great tip. All right, let's see if we have any more questions from our audience. Let's see any in the chat and we'll check on Facebook and see if we have any questions. From our While Facebook you're doing channel. that, Ms. McCurry, I'd love to shout out um, that over the course of the fast, this, this is a brag on, on our students and our former students. So over the course of the past year, we've had three uh, major outbriefs. We've uh, seen five academic conference presentations, two scholarly articles, one forthcoming book chapter, significant injects of resilience topics and readings in the Global College of PME, um, master's program cu curriculum, creation of um, Air University advanced research electives for CGOs aimed at developing winning culture and social connection, um, and commanders who have left and created multiple opportunities for, um, for building resilience in their, um, in, in their commands and in their teams through um, all kinds of activities, through resilience discussions, and even creation of a comprehensive Airman development strategy. Mm -hmm. So the 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 point that um, I love to make is that we 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 don't talk about these things, read about these things, learn about these things for them to live on in the classroom. We um, we we work on them so that then they can move out into the world and have some impact. And and we're already beginning to see some very specific local impacts from from the wonderful work of our students and our. Uh, who are distinguished graduates who I call our Alumni Hall of Fame. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, we have another question here for you, Dr. Steen. Uh, what great things can we expect from the Resilience Task Force uh, for the next academic year? And there, are there any big things that you're planning? Thank you so much for that question. So I would say stay tuned. This yeah. time next year, hopefully we'll have some specifics for you, but I am working um, with, with my colleagues on some ways that we can model some of the things that we're talking about. So very specifically, not just learn about ways to build social connection, um, but actually take part in and do them. So some teamwork, um, some teamwork activities and things of that nature uh, are going to be on the docket for the coming year. Awesome. We're very excited to see what's coming out of this research task force. And I'm definitely interested to see the implementation that happens within the Air Force and the DOD from the research projects from this course. All right, so uh, before we sign off, we wanna let you know, Dr. Steen and Lieutenant Colonel Allison, it's been a pleasure having you both today. So thank you so much for joining us and uh, telling us about this really important topic for the Air Force. Thank you so much. Thank you, we've enjoyed it. Absolutely. I also want to give a special thanks to Ms. Tayasha Cannon-Barnes for operating our tech behind the scenes, and also our ASCLC faculty and staff who joined us today, and all of our viewers who joined in for this episode. So join us next month for another episode, and remember, we are ASCLC, the Air Force's Global Classroom.